Well, hello, glorious people of the interwebs, and welcome back to Red Dead Redemption 2. Today we're going to be checking out another secret, and we're going to be heading up to the snow area, which we haven't really been in many times in this game, but this is a particularly cool thing. We're going to see if we can mess around with this and get anything weird to happen or maybe even break the game. Who really knows? But I hope you guys all enjoy this episode, and thank you once again for the amazing support on the Red Dead Redemption 2 series. Now, we do have a lot of other games releasing on the channel. We've got Jump Force, Anthem, Far Cry, New Dawn, and Metro Exodus all released on the same day and trying to push out content for that. So if you're curious about any of those games, feel free to check those out on the channel. We are heading up to a very specific spot, and I'll show you exactly where we're headed to on the map right now. Now, this is going to be one of the Easter eggs or secrets, whatever you really want to call it. And we're heading down to this location. I have to ex I have to explore a little bit once we get there, um, but it shouldn't be too difficult to find. At least I hope not. Now, to be able to unlock this, you need to have done all of the side missions with uh, with Dragic, the uh, Dr Dragic, basically the the guy from the Tesla factory north of Annisburg. I believe it's called the Bouncing Baby Boy. Now, I did this ages ago, and I never checked out the Easter egg. I knew about it, but I never went to check it out for myself. And you guys have been asking me to check it out quite often. So I figured, you know what? It's about time we went and just basically see if we can do anything with it. Can we, can we drag it? Can we do anything? Can we move it? Uh, can we make anything interesting happen to this thing? We're going to find out today, so hopefully we can make something cool happen. I just got freaking wrecked by a pronghorn. I didn't know they could take you out because I've run over these things many times. But damn, that pronghorn just took out my horse's legs and damn near killed me. God, it was, it was epic on that pronghorn. I mean, the pronghorn died, but I didn't know that was even. Po oh, come on, wolves. Oh, my God. There's so is that a bear, too? You have got to be kidding me. Please. Is that a bear? Okay, it's a black bear. Not, it's not bad. Just a black bear. Definitely could be worse. Um, excuse me. No bueno, bork bork. You want, you want to go, bro? You just saw all the other bork borks die. Oh, this one's determined. Usually they'll like run away after like one or two. Man, after playing Red Dead Redemption Two, it's kind of hard to play other games and and enjoy them quite as much. Like uh, Far Cry is pretty, but it's just. Like, the detail with the animals and, and stuff like that is just... No game really compares to the amount of detail and just sheer amount of work that went into creating Red Dead Redemption 2. It's actually might be hard for me to enjoy other games after enjoy, after playing and just enjoying every little thing about this game. It's, it's insane. Now, it looks like where we're going is the top of that mountain there. Now, I've gotten to the top of that on, online because I was chasing trolls and... Decided me and my posse would uh, hunt down these trolls in the snow. Basically, we hunt them all over across the map. It was fantastic. We made them pay the troll toll hard. But that's the only time I've ever really been, like, really far back here in the snow area. And I have gotten the panoramic map back here. I, I don't know if I got it on this save, though. We might have to double check one of the cabins around here and see if we can get the panoramic map. Oh. There's... Oh, that's interesting. There's actually conversations all the way back here for John. I don't know if anybody's ever shown this off before. I knew there was, like, conversations from the story at all the camps, but never came back here. This is this is the first area where you, where you camp out in the game. And I just heard a voice. It sounded maybe like it was... I don't know exactly though who it was. Was it Sadie? That was cool. It's basically just like hearing ghosts. Crazy. I gotta see if maybe we can get that to trigger fully. We got anything in here that we can actually loot? I don't even know. It's been so long since they were here. This place is just, like, destroyed. I wonder if I, like, camp out here or, like, sit down. Maybe I can get that to fully engage. I'm not 100% sure, but I think just that one line was... All we got to her. 
Oh, got to herd. Yeah, I think it's just the one line. I haven't actually gone back to all the camps in order to see all the conversations that you can get. But I'm pretty sure it's just like a line or two or you know, just a couple seconds of dialogue that they flash back to. That was pretty cool, though. It definitely doesn't seem like I want to get anything else. All right. Well, on to the robot. So there's one very important thing you have to do to find the robot, and that's to actually do the the very ending of this side quest. Now, there's not going to be anything that pops up here. It's just one of those things. Now, the funny thing is... Where's your creation now? John never met the professor, but now we get the uh, the electric lantern, which is pretty cool, and I, I never got this. I completely forgot to go back here during the day. You know, back in the Dizay. Uh, so we got the electric lantern now, like a boss, and we can see clearly that his creation not only escaped, but murdered him. Pretty brutally, I might add. Let's take a little closer look here. Oh, it looks like I, like, stabbed him in the eye or something. That's just... That is a brutal murder. So, I was kind of curious if there was anything else around here that we might be able to investigate that we didn't see upon first pass. Maybe, maybe not. It'd be crazy if we just, like, electrocuted ourselves or something accidentally. I don't think that's going to happen, but maybe there's, like, other notes back here. There we go. We've got a note. <clears throat> Let's see what it says. Uh, five years, one automaton receiving funding win top scientist prize. Six years, two automatons make automaton factory. Ten years, 100 become very rich man. Fifteen, automata automation army take over the world. Oh my god. He was planning to take over the world this entire time. Oh. Why does everybody's bed look like they shit in it? That's just... It's not healthy, man. Not healthy at all. Got a silver pocket watch in here. That almost looks like Nigel Dickens' uh, crazy-ass drink from hell. Thankfully, it's not. Can we pick up his body, though? That would be pretty cool if we could. But I feel like it's it's meant to be kind of like Mike. Ooh, there's another note over here. Oh, it's like it's got this one's got drawings on it. Invisible waves, ghost waves, mystery waves, magic waves, waves you cannot see. Intriguing. Well, now that we've come in here and. We've seen that he was murdered, and his automaton is nowhere to be seen. We can now actually figure out exactly... I can't get out of that door. All these premium cigarettes over here. Uh, anyways, let's head back all the way to the snow biome. <laughs> See what can be seen. Now, we should still be going to the same location. I believe it's at the top of this mountain. Shouldn't be too bad to get to. I don't think we go up that one. I think we go up this next little peak here. There we go. So we got to go around where these two broken trees are. And then just there he is. Look at that beautiful robot. Now, we go down here and get up close to it. Nice. I imagine we can probably inspect it. Now, since John never technically... And met this robot. It just laughed. That's... That's terrifying. Oh? Is it going to try and kill me next? 969? Giggity. Okay. We inspect the robot. It's all rusty. It looks like it's been here forever now. I wonder if 
it looks different if you find this as Arthur. Because it's definitely like all rusted out and stuff. I don't know if that's how it's actually supposed to look. It's like it's just slowly dying. It's sad. We do have to explode it. Can I not inspect the site or anything? I guess not. Okay. I was... Oh, I had a prompt for... Oh. I get a prompt for like a second. Oh, no, that was just the rest. Okay. Um, interesting. We're going we're gonna to have to try and blow this guy up or mess with it or something. So, I figured first things first. Oh, it did give us a red mark at first. There we go. So, can we like legitimately kill it? What happens if we shoot it in the head? Oh. That didn't sound good at all. Oh, it's definitely dead now. It was like, le it was legitimately alive. And we killed it. That's kind of sad. I mean, we're gonna definitely gonna have to come back as Arthur and see what happens. Oh, why does it sound so squishy when we hit it with an ax? Oh no. All right, so there's one thing that we do have to test here. And if you're familiar with this channel, you know we like explosions. And What better way to test something out than by exploding it, right? So thankfully, I do have a couple other saves before this, but after completing the quest. So I should be able to unlock this as Arthur in pretty, qu pretty quickly. There we go. Got some... Get some dynamite up in here, maybe. Around it, something. I would like to launch him off the cliff, if possible. Before I waste too much time with the dynamite, since it seems like it doesn't want to be placed. Um, let's see if it actually moves when we blow it up. Oh, oh God. <laughs> the chain reaction on the dynamite, man. Holy crap. I, I thought it was too far away. Sweet baby Jesus. As right, so this thing is like legitimately in the ice. Wonder if we try and blow it up before we kill it. Maybe that'll get it to move. Oh, the fire goes out like super duper quick. All right, let's come back as Arthur and see. Cause I'm pretty sure this will look different as Arthur. And maybe when it tries to talk, it'll say something else. So we got here as Arthur and we're going to find out if it looks any different. I'm pretty sure it's going to look different, so. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, because the picture and the strategy guide of this thing looks brand new. And I'm like, the one I saw did not. What's it saying? It sounds like it's either laughing or it's like Papa, maybe? So it's kind of unfortunate that it doesn't say anything or do anything different as Arthur. I wonder if it's because it's so long after I did this mission. Because I did these back in chapter four. And this save is in chapter six. This is the earliest save I have left on this account other than like chapter three. Oh, that was interesting. It's definitely saying like babbling a little bit longer than when I came as John. Let's see if we can properly explode. We can finally give it a nice dynamite enema and see what happens. Nope. Ah, that's unfortunate. Well, it's dead now. It can't kill anybody else. Stupid murdering robot. This is why you don't make robots, ladies and gentlemen. Because they murder everybody. But anyways, I do hope you guys enjoyed the episode. I really thought maybe something different would happen, like, as far as talking to it when we came back as Arthur. But I think it might be still too long after... Oh, it sounds so weird when we hit it. Um, 
I, th I think it's a little too long after I had done the quest, maybe. Let me know what you guys experienced with this. Maybe if you came earlier. Because this is two chapters after I initially did this. It's like squishy and electric at the same time. It's it's very strange. Anyways, let me know what you think in the comments below. Couldn't get it to move, but many people were asking me, and I was quite curious myself, but figured I'd kill two birds with one stone and, and cover finding the robot and seeing it as John and Arthur and trying to blow it up. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you all in the next one.